as leaders, it becomes complicated. Glory to God. First of all, let me say that it's a difference between being a pastor. That too. But it's a difference between being a pastor when you step into a work that has already been established. Yeah. Somebody has already gone before you and done the hard part. Uh, Somebody has already gone before you and labored and 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 and, 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 and took up the the, the, the the follow ground, broke up the follow ground and 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 and, 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 and sold those years and those years and those years oh, that yeah. it took to get the ministry established. And then years go by and then they bring some young preacher in and oh he got a degree in this. Oh and then they send him here and they install him and then but you already got people, you already got everything in order, you got everything already in place. But when you are a founder and you have and you have to lay the groundwork. Glory to God. When you have to step out on nothing. Glory to God. It's a different kind of pastoring. Yes, it is. Glory to God. Because there was nothing that was laid for you. You have to literally step out on what isn't there. Come on now. And create the path. I feel you. Oh my God. And so, and so I want to first say that. I would like for the people of God to know, and I hate that the people of God are not here, mm -hmm. but I would like for the people of God to know, and I can't get this recorded, I ain't got enough minutes, but I would, hate for the, I would like for the people, I need for the people of God to know that when you start in ministry, even Jesus said that he sent them two by two, and and when you have a ministry and you are the founder and you are laying the groundwork, we sometimes become weary. We sometimes become depleted. We sometimes become tired. Yes. Glory to God. And I think about my former pastor, not the one that is still my pastor. Because just because you start pastoring don't mean that you don't have nobody over you. Come on now. But I mean my former pastor. Who pastored me for eight years, from 24, 2004 to 2012? Every three or four months or so, glory to God, he was he would go down to Florida, which is his hometown, and he would go fishing, and he would spend that weekend there, just him and God, so he can get filled up from everything he had been pouring out. The Bible even says that Jesus, all the miracles he had done, all the wonderful works he had done, the raising of the dead, the healing of the sick, the opening of the blinded eyes, the unstopping of the deaf ears, all of the, 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 the nuggets and the wisdom that he imparted into his disciples. The Bible says that even the Savior of the world, he had to pull away from everything and everyone and go up into a mountain somewhere, go over somewhere where nobody is there and talk to his daddy so that the one that sent him to do the work could fill him back up again so that he can continue what he started. Oh, now. And, and, and it's a sad thing that when you get depleted, and when you and when you don't have the same strength on you that you once had because you don't have the luxury of going aside and getting filled back up because you don't have nobody in ministry with you that can take on that place in and that moment. It's sad that people don't understand it. So they're not found faithful. Lord have mercy, Jesus. The Bible says in Hebrews 13 and 17, Obey them that have rule over you and submit yourselves, for they watch for your souls. As they that must give account, that they may do it with joy and not with grief. For that is unprofitable, not for them, it says, but it is unprofitable for you, the people of God. 
when you make it grievous for your leader to lead you. When you make it difficult for your leader to lead you in the way that don't just seem right, but the way that is right in the eyesight of not the pastor himself or herself, but in the eyesight of the Lord God. I told you I don't know, I don't know why God orchestrated it because I, I, I didn't know what God was going to say when I told you to come on over here today. But nevertheless, God's word and what he put on my heart must be released. It must be. I give God praise today. And so I give him praise. And so, and so I need the people of God to understand that as a founder of a ministry, Nobody laid the groundwork for me. Nobody established a church and then it went on for 150 years and I just ran on in the door and said, I'm y'all new pastor. I have to lay the groundwork from nothing to something. And so in this, in this intricate, glory to God, in this uh, sensitive time, as being one that steps out on nothing, I've been pastoring for almost two years and I don't have the luxury because we don't have a ministry that somebody turned over to us. Come on now. God said you are to establish it. Come on now. And because I am only one man uh -huh. and I don't have a co-pastor or even, or even a, a, a wife in this season that can help me in ministry I am doing it by myself now when I say that I'm not talking about not the members I don't mean it that way I'm talking about the leadership aspect I'm having to carry the Lord by myself and the Lord showed me he said you know one thing about people people are fickle Yes, sir. The moment you get, see, because see, first of all, you are you, you not to be nowhere where somebody that's supposed to be leading you is living in sin. I'm not talking about that. But God said, people are fickle. And the moment you done gave them everything you got, and when you become depleted, they'll get up and walk out on you. Because they don't understand what it is. You need to understand the season that we're in. The season. That I have a load on me. That I can't turn over to co-pastor because there is no co-pastor. Uh -huh. I don't have the luxury of going and taking a weekend and getting filled back up. So forgive me and pardon me that, 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 that the messages may not be as strong as they once were. Because I don't have the luxury of being pulled to the side while somebody else can run the church. So I got to do it all by myself. And, but if I'm found faithful, God will send people just like he sent you, Sister LaShawn. He sent other people. He will send the people. But at the same time, just because he sends people, he sends people that they might be trained and raised up so that they can come to the place of leadership in certain aspects. It will do you all a disservice if I just let you come into church and just put you in position. Because guess what? No man that puts his hand to the plow and turns back is, is, is worthy or fit for the kingdom of God. And so I even think about my former pastor same one that pastored me for eight years. I knew that I was living right. I knew my life had become clean. I, and I was a preacher in the church. I was a minister. Mm -hmm. And I, there was about eight other ministers or so. And all the other ministers got an opportunity to preach. But he would not let me preach. And I went home sometimes saying, what's wrong with me? Mm -hmm. Oh my God, today. But see, he understood that my calling was to go a little bit further than theirs was. And I'm not saying that in no, in no put down way. He, they were called to upgird him as ministers and elders in the church. But God already knew that one day I would have to pastor for myself. And so he had to be a little bit more hard on me. He had to make sure that I was fortified a little bit more so because my distance might be a little bit further. Amen. And so to the people of God, and this is not no throwing stones or, or shooting no arrows, but uh, 
But when I say I don't have that kind of help to step aside, even though I have people who are here and people who are faithful and I thank God for you, I also understand that I would do you a disservice if I don't allow you to get to a certain place in God oh. before I put you in certain positions. Now that's word all that stuff. Because I would be doing you a disservice. And so because I don't have it, even my mother, love her, she's in ministry, I know she's a minister, so she can sit up here and everything, but she is not in that place where, 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 where she can even do that. Not because she's not living right, no. but it's because there are some things that must be fortified. Oh my God. And so, I must say this, I have been pastoring you God's people only from a place of trying to feed you so that you can have something to keep you throughout the week and I know that that's a part of it and it's not that I did not know the other aspect but because when you are a founder and when it's only a few four or five folks and, and you know that the season that you're in to establish something in the kingdom of this earth. Because the Bible says that the kingdoms of this earth shall become the kingdoms of our God. Yes, be my, by my understanding the sensitivity of what I've been called to. Glory to God. I have, I have, glory to God, I have been, been uh, 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 lenient in some things. And God says, I have called for my house to be a house of order. Glory to God. And you, man of God, has to make sure that things are in order. Mm. Glory to God. And this is why he said to me, not to say that he's not saying it to you and to you and to others that need that might need to hear this, but the word was for me. My God, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus Christ. Oh my God, today. Oh my God, today. If I be for you, you correct them when they need to be corrected. If they're really here for to, if they're really here for the right reason, and if I have turned their hearts over to you for you for them to undergird you and to serve in this ministry, then when I speak a word of correction, don't worry about if they're gonna leave or not. If they're really here for real, they'll be able to shund over hook They'll be able to endure sound doctrine. Ah, oh God, they'll be able to endure correction because correction is your best friend. It is. You don't grow in God without somebody having the ability to correct your spirit. Come on now. There are many times I had to be corrected, and you know what I did? I sat there and I took it. Because what the enemy wants for us is to be islands all by ourselves. What the enemy wants for us, glory to God, is to not understand the power of unity. The unity of the faith. And so the enemy comes in and tries to sow discord. The enemy comes in and tries to find whom he can use to get in the midst of what have put together that no man no demon no principality no power no spiritual wickedness in high places or the rulers of the of the darkness of this world can put asunder uh, hallelujah Christ said that, that the Christ said that upon this rock what rock is it that thou art the Christ the son of the most high God upon this revelation will I build my church and the gates of hell shed the most will not prevail. Mm. And so it is my mantle and my responsibility concerning soul food international ministries that I take on the mantle and declare that for us as a body, the gates of hell will not prevail. Yeah. 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 Because things happen in the spirit before we can ever even see them begin to manifest in the natural. That's why they happen in the natural because it is a result of something that has already taken place in the spirit. 
And the fact that we're almost empty today is an outer show of what's been happening in the spirit realm. And God says, man of God, you've got to make sure that you keep your people and teach them and come and keep them together. Drive out discord. Drive out division. The Bible says that we must love one another as Christ has loved us. So let's not talk about one another. Let's not put down one another, especially your pastor, because herein is wisdom. Stay off the phone talking about the man of God. Somebody said, well, who I need to call and find out if they said so and so and this and that. And no, I'm a prophet. Ain't nobody told me nothing. I can say things in the Holy Ghost. And herein is wisdom. on the man of God. Why? Because, because, watch this, because the Bible says that a house divided against itself cannot stand. And when we're talking about one another, when we're not loving the way that we ought to love one another, the enemy is looking for the weakest link. And if somebody call you talking about the man of God that was ordained to give you the bread of life that you might live, you ought to be able to tell them you are the weakest link. I don't want to talk to you about that. Because you are the one that the enemy is giving access to this ministry to. We got to close up the gap. Close it up. Because even our worship services are not like they used to be. When the God shed out of the and when the glory of God was sitting on us, well, my sister LaShawn would even call it the upper room. And that's what we call it. Because of the, of the saturation of his spirit was sitting in the midst of us. And God says, we have to be on one accord. The Bible said that the, that, that, that the enemy going to and from seeking whom he may devour. And the Bible says that one can chase a thousand and two can put ten thousand to flight. So the enemy knows the power is in our unity. The power is when we seek arm in arm, hand in hand, and we march together on one accord. Then there is no division. He cannot get in and sow discord. He cannot get in and make us enemies of one another rather than brothers and sisters holding up one another, being the iron that sharpens the iron. Mm. Being the one that is strong, that bears the infirmity of the one that might in this season be weak. And when you see your pastor may not be Delivering the word of God in the strength that you know that he is. You don't just not come to church. You pray for him. You hold him up. So that his strength may be regained. Because you understand that he is a founder. And he does not have the luxury of going and spending a week over here to get refilled back up. Because he has to lay the crowd up. And there's nobody else that can do it in this season but himself. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? Amen. And see, God has been dealing with me because I allow my relationships to cause me to, to be mild and gentle. And God said they don't need mild and gentle. My people need my word because if you don't govern them in the word, they will begin to scatter. And I don't, I'm not talking about leaving the church. I'm talking about not having unity, oneness in God. And no, I'm not perfect. But I oh God, but I think but I have, but I thank God that I don't practice it. Amen. But I thank God that my heart is 
for him. And he called me to this place. I did not call myself. And so here it is. I'm reminded of a man named Saul. Come on now. And he was the first king of Israel. But, 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 but God became displeased with him because of his deeds and the things that he done. And God raised up David to be king. And glory to God, for some reason, David was faithful. David played for him and, and served under his ministry, if I can say it that way. Mm -hmm. But for some reason, Paul, I mean, Saul turned against David, his servant. Mm -hmm. David had not done anything to him. But for some reason, he turned on him. Mm -hmm. Glory to God. Mm -hmm. But what I'm trying to say is this. That even after Saul had tried to kill him, even after Saul had not been all that he could have been, when David had an opportunity to, 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 to overtake Saul, even though Saul, even though God said that I've rejected him and now I'm raising up another man, guess what? Guess what Jesus did? What, 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 what David did. With the, their servants, I believe I'm paraphrasing, his dirt servants came to him and said, we have found where Saul is. You can go by night and overtake him. And he said, I will not put my hands on the Lord's anointed. Do I hear what I'm saying? I am the Lord's anointed. And even when I'm weak, I'm still the Lord's anointed. Even when I can't go away and get filled back up and so that I can come and preach a powerful message to you, I'm still the Lord's anointed. Put not your mouth on God's prophet. Touch not my, oh my God, my anointing, the scripture says. And do my prophet no harm. That's what the word says. I didn't come up with it. I didn't make it up. The enemy, God is here to teach us because if you are not taught, if there is no correction in the house of God, we'll be anything. And the thing that you have seen, the thing that we have witnessed, the glory and the power and the anointing that we know that is in this house, it will disperse and we'll be looking around wondering what happened. We let the division happen. We let discourse happen. And God said, I am a God of order. You want me to come in here and slay y'all and lay you out in the power of God and walk around speaking in tongues and praising God. But God says, go and get your, oh my God, go and get your ox together with your brothers and sisters. Mend these things in the house of God. Then come back and worship me. Then come back and praise me. Then come back and give your gift to me at the altar. Because if we are not right, if we are not one, if we don't allow, if we don't recognize what the enemy is trying to do to us in this season, we're going to look up and look around and it won't hardly be nobody here. We're going to look up and look around and the glory that we once knew that sits on this house, we won't be able to find it. And God says we must be corrected. Because the Bible says those whom he loves, he chastises them. He corrects them. And this is the glorious goodness of God. That if he whoops you, that is a telltale sign. It ain't even no telltale sign. It is just flat out evidence that you belong to him. That he don't whoop those that ain't his truth. My God today. Whoopings don't feel good, but we ought to thank God for them. Correction don't feel good, but I hear the word said that the word of God is like a two-edged sword. Oh God, in the name of Jesus, that it cuts and divides. Glory to God. Hallelujah. It might not feel good right now. But it's work working a greater good for us. I hear the word that says in Proverbs 27, 5 and 6. It says open rebuke. Mm 